Miss Monica, the podium is warm and all yours. Sorry, give me, sorry I was a little early here. Thanks. Hi, productivity. So good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much, Stefan. Um, I have a very short briefing today for all of you. I know it's a special day. Um, the President of the General Assembly, Maria Fernanda Espinosa, has just attended um, a meeting with the Department of Public Information and representatives of non-governmental organizations, NGOs. Ms. Espinosa declared that we all need to join forces to make sure that multilateralism is taken seriously. She believes that the voices of civil society are key to make the UN relevant to all and that communities around the world have a crucial role to play in the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals, our SDGs. And earlier today, Ms. Espinosa issued a tweet recognizing the work of volunteers as she marks International Volunteer Day. The PGA recalls that as we approach the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, we also recognize volunteers who embody the thinking of the architects of this declaration. She thanks all volunteers around the world who dedicate their time and passion to others. And on her agenda, finally, the PGA has chaired a meeting at the GA Hall on the report of the first committee, followed by her conversation with NGO representatives in a separate gathering, of course. The PJ is also holding separate meetings with the Minister of Children and Youth Affairs of Ireland, the chairperson of the Coordinating Bureau of the Movement of the Non-Aligned Countries, Mr. Samuel Moncada, and later today, Ms. Espinosa will meet the General Committee, and this evening, she will be at the 2018 UN Correspondents Association ANCA Awards Ceremony to celebrate the 70th anniversary of ANCA and to honor the winners of the best media coverage of the United Nations. Sounds familiar? <laughs> Thank you very much. Now I take your questions. I will start, start with Joe and then Mr. Abadi and Carol in the back. Joe, yes, go I'd ahead. like to know if you have any more uh, details on um, the scheduled meeting tomorrow of the General Assembly. You said at 3 o'clock on mm -hmm. the proposed anti Hamas resolution in terms of format, um, voting procedures, et cetera. Okay. We don't have any further announcements to make um, on the format, and then uh, the meeting will be, as we said before, held uh, at 3 p.m. at the GA Hall, and uh, it will also be a webcast for all of you to follow. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Joe. Mr. Abadi. Thank you, Monica. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of talk uh, today in the UN about multilateralism. Mm -hmm. How does the president of the General Assembly define the term? I think the president has um, said from the very beginning that we are living in very challenging times. And uh, the only, absolutely only answer for our challenges nowadays uh, is multilateralism, is cooperation. And when she talks about multilateralism, she's talking about cooperation of uh, member states, cooperation of uh, international actors, organizations, where everybody uh, joins the dialogue that we need uh, to see happening in order to sort out our collective challenges. And also, I don't know if you recall her presentation um, for uh, here at uh, Columbia University, uh, shortly after taking office, where she spoke to students who had the same question. And then she said very clearly that uh, uh, multilateralism is not uh, an option or, or, uh, or one of the solutions for our problems uh, nowadays as international community, but is actually the, the, the answer, uh, the solution. So that's what she has been trying to do uh, in her uh, capacity as, uh, as the PGA as well. Does the definition imply the participation of NGOs in the decision-making process? That's, a, that's a, an interesting question that I think you asked in the beginning about uh, civil society. And then, um, you know, you, will you remember our, our uh, 
theme for this uh, presidency, which is basically uh, making the UN relevant to all. And uh, what I said to you in the beginning, uh, I think only days in these briefings, uh, it's actually valid. Uh, when we are seeking uh, a dialogue, uh, we are seeking uh, uh, we are seeking the involvement of other parties. Uh, we are we have to be inclusive. And I think that's why she today uh, spent, uh, we had a colleague here who uh, was actually there, uh, spent uh, some hours talking to NGOs. She's listening to people directly. She, as I mentioned before, is also very keen on being uh, on her uh, Twitter account, uh, uh, you know, sensing and, and uh, uh, listening, basically, uh, to the opinions of others. And uh, this is a very inclusive president. And uh, I think, I hope I, I brought a little bit of light and, uh, to your question. But thank you for this question. It's very important. Carol, and then our colleague from the Morocco News Agency. Yes. Monica, does the president of the GA consider that the resolution that the Americans are going to put forward um, for a vote tomorrow, is, does she consider it a resolution of an, of an important question which would require a two-third vote? Look, the PGA, uh, she's guided by the rules of procedure of the General Assembly. And uh, as she explained yesterday when we had the stakeout, and by the way, thank you for, for you who, for going there yesterday, uh, she has a responsibility to respect the rules of the GA. That's uh, her role uh, as the President of the General Assembly. So the decision uh, regarding majority or for the resolution uh, that you mentioned tomorrow, but like for all the resolutions that uh, uh, are being discussed or will be discussed, uh, is the prerogative of the whole assembly. So the member states will decide, and Mrs. Pinoza, as the president of the General Assembly, will conduct proceedings based on that uh, decision. That's what I, I have for you. And by the way, since we are talking about uh, resolutions and General Assembly, um, Somebody asked me the day before yesterday uh, when the resolutions from the first committee uh, will be voted, and actually the day is today, 5th of December. And then, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you. The PGA yesterday launched this important campaign with Prime Minister uh, Gaston Brown from Antigua and Barbuda on plastic pollution in water. So how, how important is this topic to her? Is it a priority for her mandate? And also, do you intend to have any similar uh, campaigns or events to, to, you know, to uh, mm -hmm. Uh, sensibilize pu uh, public opinion about this this problem. Yes, th and thanks for this question. Um, uh, by the way, I would like to invite you all to, if you have uh, uh, some time, to look our YouTube channel. It's United Nations GA73, and we have there uh, the the entire stakeout, which was about uh, 20 minutes or well, 20 minutes, and uh, where she explains that. But also the Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Mr. Gaston Brown, and the deputy deputy. Uh, permanent representative of Norway, uh, Her Excellency uh, Marie Scoria, she was there uh, as well yesterday. It's, uh, it's very important, it's, it's a priority, definitely, um, and uh, it is part of our drive and our uh, priority, you know, uh, you have seven in this presidency uh, on environmental action. Uh, I mean, we all know, know this data that so if we don't do anything, if we don't change our, our patterns, uh, if we don't act more responsibly as consumers, and if we don't do anything, let's uh, put it uh, that way, uh, by 2050, we will have more plastic in the oceans than fish. And nowadays, uh, recent studies have showed us that uh, it has been proven uh, that was, uh, no, small, very micro plastics have been detected in human bodies uh, because, of course, fish eat plastic and humans eat fish, as it was explained yesterday. So it is the pa it's part of our uh, environmental action um, um, priority, one of the seven. And uh, there will be, as uh, it was announced yesterday, several events. And one uh, will be held in Tigan Barbuda, one of our of our supporters, the country, uh, on the 27th of April, uh, a concert there. But there are other actions uh, here in New York as well. And uh, yesterday it was also um, mentioned that uh, it's important for us in this building to uh, start uh, doing a little bit more than we are doing, than we are doing already, 
uh, and bring our own bottle and uh, doing because all these small steps that can be considered as small steps they become big steps because if everybody does it we have of course uh, more leverage but that's what uh, the pj said yesterday and i'm more than happy to give you uh, further details uh, it is a very important story and thank you for covering yesterday yeah go ahead and then joe you need your mic so why you yeah go ahead yeah mm -hmm. so yesterday the pj said that um you know one of the strategies to increase um, global advocacy for climate action and to beat plastic pollution. And can you tell us what are some of the strategies that she's going to use here at the United Nation and with other UN entities? Because mm -hmm. she said there will be a photo contest for young people to join and um, yeah. At the General Assembly, that's correct. Uh, yeah, it's important to highlight that this is a, um, a partnership. This is an initiative uh, with uh, uh, UN agencies, of course, UN environment, as we, as you, we all know, uh, but uh, with um, uh, civil society. And uh, the beginning of your question, you were asking about uh, the initiatives and the, the, can you just repeat this part? The strategies, yes, of course. Um, she, yesterday, she was telling us that um, one of the, the most important things for, for uh, the, the beginning of this uh, initiative of our global campaign is actually uh, start getting uh, more done here within the, the United Nations, uh, but not only New York, uh, in all uh, headquarters wherever the, the UN is present. And I think one of our colleagues also asked about uh, doing more for the water dispensers. And uh, she said she will herself uh, take this uh, subject with uh, the Secretary General and other, uh, 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 other parts, parties here uh, which are um, uh, concerned uh, in order to see how we can uh, do more. But again, also we, many of us have started already and uh, we can do even better. Yes, thank you. But thank you for for this uh, observation. Joe, you have the last word. Go ahead. I have the last word? <laughs> OK. Uh, I, I want to go back to the uh, resolution that's going to be under consideration tomorrow, mm -hmm. proposed by the US condemning Hamas for rocket fire, et cetera. Uh, you said it would be entirely up to the member states to determine whether it's an important question requiring two-thirds vote or not. I'm wondering, though, is there any um, either parliamentarian or role for the president herself uh, in looking at the precedent of the series of votes taken, I think it was last Friday, on the various resolutions dealing with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, all of which were critical of Israel. Two of, of those resolutions, at least, including the one on the Golan Heights, uh, were adopted but did not have anywhere near two-thirds vote. So is there any issue here if there's a different standard applied to essentially a subject involving the same dispute that singles out this one resolution requiring a two-thirds vote when that precedent was not followed uh, in the series of resolutions adopted, again, I believe, last Friday? Look, I think we should not get ahead of ourselves here today. This vote is tomorrow. Uh, the meeting is tomorrow at 3 p.m. Um, at the General Assembly. Um, as I said before, she is guided by the rules of procedure. Uh, this is not, we're not talking here about uh, different standards of different uh, mechanisms. We are talking about rules of procedure uh, that are clearly established of the General Assembly. And she herself explained yesterday, uh, she has a responsibility to respect the rules of the General Assembly. So I would leave it uh, for uh, the, the meeting tomorrow and uh, you all are invited to uh, follow. And of course, we will see what member states decide on uh, course of action, which action they would like to take. But thank you. Mr. Abadi, go ahead. Thank you, Monica. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest issues in the United Nations is the non-implementation of resolutions. In the General Assembly, as you know, they are only recommendations, so the President can only encourage. In Security Council, it's a different situation. They are mandatory. What can the President of the General Assembly do to effect or help 
uh, implement the resolutions within the Security Council? Well, the President of the General Assembly is the President of the General Assembly, is one of the six main bodies of the organization, organization as we, we all know. Um, I would uh, uh, refer you to, in regard with uh, resolutions uh, by the Security Council, to the Security Council. Uh, but I can say, uh, uh, in general, Mr. Abadi, that uh, the President uh, has been very clear about that, that resolutions are to be abided with and are to be implemented. Uh, it's very important that what we decide are uh, implemented. And with that, I would uh, wish you a wonderful uh, reception this evening and, uh, and congratulations again on your work and uh, on the 70th years young. Thank you very much. I see you tomorrow. Thanks. Tomorrow.